Dake with everyone, Kojima, Atashi, and welcome back to episode number 56, I 56, of the Inline G Flute Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline G. I don't know what episode it is, lads, when this podcast comes out, I'll be in America. I'm speaking to you from the past. I'm not in America now, I'm, in, I'm home now, but when this comes out, I'll be in America. I think I'll be in Tuscan. I don't know, I don't know what the fuck Tuscan is, or where it is, but by the time this podcast comes out, I'll still not have a fucking clue what Tuscan is. <laughs> but anyway, lads, this week's episode, we are back with another guest episode. I was delighted to find out recently that this fella actually lives in Köln, Fair Köln City, my own adopted home here in Germany. So getting them on was a delight and a very easy thing, because I didn't have to go gallivanting across Europe like I've done recently. So my guest this week is Spanish Filipino flute player, multidisciplinary artist, orchestral musician and winner of the Kobe Flute Competition, nonetheless. It is Rafael Adubas Bayog. So we chatted about Rafael's career so far, his new passion of Baroque flute, how theatre can influence your performance on stage, and how we both appreciate the musical stylings of Steve Aoki. So go ahead and enjoy, lads. You can skip straight ahead to that episode. It's in the chapters. But before you do, or if you want to skip, go ahead. But for those who don't, thank you for staying, because... <clears throat> The Inline G podcast is free and always will be free. That's a guarantee. However, if you want to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon. On the screen now is the address. And for the audio listeners, that is patreon.com forward slash the Inline G flute podcast. It costs five quid a month, lads. Five euros. I don't know what that is in your gobbledygook money over in America, but it's the same thing. All right. And with that donation, you're keeping this podcast alive. You get four episodes a month of this podcast every single month. So if you enjoy listening to this podcast, it gives you a bit of solace, a bit of distraction from life's woes, and you think, fuck, if I saw Gareth in the pub, I'd buy him a pint, you can do it virtually now. Give me a fiver a month. I do everything around here, everything on this podcast, marketing, graphic design, research, audio production, video production, scripts, travel to get guests, I do it also. Being a patron helps generate a regular income for this podcast. It is so important. I feel supported as an artist. For one of the few times in my life, I feel like I'm creating art and it's getting financially supported. It's fucking class. So thank you to everyone who signed up to the Patreon. You guys are doing the Lord's work. Um, it also lets me travel and go and meet these guests, which the amount of fucking episodes you're getting out of the NFA, you'll realize how important it was to support this podcast. You'll get a couple of episodes already. You get a couple of merch. You get bits of merch. Some people got their wee trading cards and you'll get all kinds of things. I've got so many things planned for you. So, if you can afford it, go and subscribe over on Patreon. You can unsubscribe at any time. You don't have to wait about for it. You just hit unsubscribe and by the next month you're gone. Not even not even the next month. You just unsubscribe and that's it. You live out your month like you do with Netflix. And you can jump back in. Jump back in. I do it all the time. In and out of different ones. So, if you can afford it, it really, really helps. It's hugely appreciated. But if you can't afford it, don't worry. It's grand. You can keep listening for free. And the other thing, quickly. The other thing. If you want to buy any sheet music, accessories, or instruments even, and especially if you're in North America, but you can be anywhere in the world for this, uh, go to Flute Center, flutecenter.com, Flute Center of New York, the fucking Flute Center of New York. They have jumped on to support Inline G. They're the brave ones. They're the ones who are sticking their neck out in the line for art. So if you go on to Flute Center, use the code INLINEG, all one word. You get 5% off all the accessories you buy, 10% off all the sheet music you buy, you get free shipping if you buy a new instrument, happy fucking days. You get an extended 18 month uh, standard service guarantee on your new instrument, so it's a bit longer, if you need like, small adjustments or any of that shit, it's all covered for you. And you will get free shipping if you want to trial a flute, a head joint or a piccolo, in the USA only that one. So, thank you guys, without any further ado, here is this week's Inline G Flute Podcast with Rafael Adubas Bayog. Yeah, because in my head, I'd be th- it's just party, party, party. But yeah. then I was always saying, you studied there, like you learned the flute there. There was a music uh-huh. conservatory as well. Yes. What yes, was that yeah. like? Very nice, actually. I really, I really um, appreciated that, uh, at least in Spain, they have this system of, okay, you have to do this the- theory theory stuff. You have, you have ah, solfege, okay. you have music history, and then the yeah. practical stuff was very good. Also, like chamber music, orchestra. Uh, oh, okay. We had even uh, jazz as like um, optional subjects. Yeah. It was a very complete. Um, yeah, like an overall education program. Yes. And I didn't notice it was that complete until I came here, for example. Okay. The people yeah. had more of a um, self uh, teaching or just yeah. having 
flute lessons before going to a conservatory, but not having the whole entire yeah. package. That's so interesting. And why did you why did you pick up the flute? What was the reason for starting the flute? Oh, there's a funny story <laughs> about <Good>. that. <laughs> That's what I love. <laughs> yeah, so we had an entrance exam uh, at the beginning, like right before you enter, around eight years old, I started. Yeah. And there's an entrance exam, which you have to tap, uh, you have to clap with a metronome. Okay. You have to sing also a song. They, they can check your intonation. So this is to get entrance into the music school? Yes. Like, but yes. before you've chosen an instrument? Uh, yes, before choosing the instrument. So you have to do all these tests before exactly. you can go, wow. Because okay. from this entrance exam, they put a ranking list. Okay. And then you can choose based on the spots. Ah, So maybe cool. there are um, 10 piano spots for flute, there are six. And yeah. then depending on the instrument and on the teachers, there are a list of spots. Wow. So I ranked first on this exam and I could choose one yeah. of the instruments. And we already spoke at home that, okay, you're going to play piano because your sister is playing piano. Yeah. And we have a, an upright piano at home, so it's cheaper yeah. and you play piano. And uh, yeah, so that was the speech. I even picked like three instruments. It was a piano, flute, violin. Okay. And uh, yeah, the thing is we were already in this room and with all the parents, with all the children, yeah. and there was a headmaster sitting and we're calling the names one by one. So I was yeah. called first, okay, Rafael Adobas. And my dad said flute. So we don't remember exactly what happened. <laughs> yes, it was like, okay, but we spoke, it was going to be piano. <laughs> yeah. Why, why flute now? And then the list came and the, the next one was called and until the very end. Yeah. And my dad was of course like surprised and shocked. And we went to the headmaster right after this and sorry, can we change the instrument? It was completely a mistake. Uh, yeah. We wanted to change to piano. And then the headmaster said, I'm so sorry. Um, it's already it's over, it's oh, yeah. too late. And all the parents, some of them left already. And uh, yeah, you have to stay to flute because we would have to repeat the whole process. And then, yeah, I just remember my dad going home and uh, telling to my mom, so we have to buy a flute. Oh, and that's how you played the flute, that's it? <laughs> yes, that's it. That's incredible, I love that because it's not, normally you get very romantic stories when people say that like, oh, I heard the flute and I loved it. And you're like, mm -hmm. no, no, it's kind of an accident. You play the flute. <laughs> oh, well, we're very glad. You, but did you play piano and violin as well then? Or was it just uh, flute? No, that was just on the list. And uh, yeah, piano, I didn't play even back then. I was okay. really singing quite a lot. Okay, then, yeah, okay. But like I and had that, no connection. That's such a good story. Oh, I love that. So you're in Ibiza. And then where did you go afterwards to study? I went to Barcelona, to yeah. MOOC. That's the I love the way you do the Barcelona as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I want to say it like that, but because I'm Irish, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it like that. Yes, 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 of course. Okay, yeah, I'm going to say worried. Barcelona there for the rest <laughs> yes. of the podcast. So you're in Barcelona. What happens next? Yeah, that was <laughs> when I was 18 and I went to study with Vicente Prats. Yes, I, oh. yes. I didn't know he taught in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this. this he's, really still, he's still teaching. And I actually met him three, four years before being 18, like 14, okay. 15. He used he to be the guest professor in the in the music school in Palma de Mallorca. Mallorca. Seriously? Yes. And oh. my teacher knew him and he actually recommended me to go to his lessons. Yeah. And I went once a month since I was 14. And that was really great. That's so... Does he speak Spanish? Yes, in Catalan. And we spoke in Catalan. He speaks Catalan? Yes, he's Spanish. He's Catalan. Is he really? I didn't know that, okay? Because I've only ever heard him speak French. Mm -hmm. and I know him in France. I didn't yes. know he spoke Spanish. Oh, wow. I yes, thought he was yes, French. Yes, yes. No, 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 he's not. <laughs> wow, because I always thought Vicente was quite a funny name for French people. There you are. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, there so... Is. Yeah. is he, like, fully Spanish? Like, totally Spanish? He, he, like, from Palamos. From, uh, yeah. Yeah, totally Spanish, yeah. I didn't know that. Mm. I thought he was French. Oh, man. Yes. Mm. Okay, that's my next question kind of out the window then. Because I was convinced Vicente was French because he plays... Or does he still play in an orchestra in Paris? He's in the uh, Orchestre de Paris. He's still in the Orchestre de Paris, yes. he, like co-principal, isn't he, with Vincent? Uh, yes, he's yeah. the principal there, yeah. Okay, yeah, because he taught at my college as well, he was at the Econ Normale. Uh -huh. So I always thought, and I went to watch his class a few times, and he speaks French like a French person. Yes. I was convinced he was French. Because yes, I was yes. going to ask you next then, did you learn like anything about the French style of flute playing? But you weren't studying with a French guy, so mm -hmm. obviously he didn't. But what was it like studying with Vicente anyway? Tell very me. nice, very nice. And uh, yeah, it was tough at the beginning because I, I could see that he was building kind of a healthy 
competition environment. Oh, did you do the class system? So do you get your lessons in front of each other? It was not uh, obligatory, but yeah, you could just okay. sit and listen. Okay. But we had like group lessons. Yeah. So everyone would play something in front of everyone. Yeah. And everyone would give feedback. Yeah. And then we had like technique, like group lessons, kind of also competing, uh, playing the uh, number one, number two from Tafan Elengo Beat. Yeah. And yeah, just doing rounds and rounds. Seriously? And when you get higher and higher, of course you get, okay, so you're out and... What, like a competition? End, yes, yes. So if you can't play it that fast, right, you're out, next one. Exactly. And it, no it goes way. faster and faster. He goes with the metronome going faster. Yeah. it's. <laughs> That's not, it sounds really stressful, but also really fun. Yeah. Depends on the attitude you have. Yeah. And okay. At that point, I mean... Yeah, it, it could be a bit, oh, like, stressful, yeah. as you say. But in the end, if you take the positive stuff from it, like, you're ready. You were ready. Yeah, and it's a good motivation as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. I, I, no. I don't know if I'd want to do that now. No. <laughs> I don't think if I want to do Tafnel and Gobert games against people. That doesn't sound very fun. Yeah, but at that time, it might have been fun. Yes, 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 yes. And, yeah, so you studied with him. Was it just with him when you were in Barcelona? Barcelona? Sorry? Was it just with Vicen when you were in Barcelona? Yes, just with him. Okay. It was two years. Yeah, two years bachelor. Okay. Then I, when I did the Erasmus in Munich. But yeah, it was years of yeah, wonderful music. He's a complete artist, a musician. and uh, He's great. Yeah. Yes. I'm a big, big, big fan of him. So you get Erasmus then in Munich? Yes. yes and yes, that was yes. with, also with Ankaya yeah. then? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then was that after your two years? So you did two years in Barcelona and then Erasmus? Or? Yes, that was my third year Erasmus. Yeah. And then I decided to stay, so I had to take the entrance exam and yeah. transfer the whole, the three years to okay. the fourth year. So okay. my fourth year was already as a regular student, bachelor. Gotcha. In Munich. Okay, okay. Hmm. We have to obviously talk about the obvious thing then is Kobe. Mm -hmm. So tell me about Kobe. When did this all come? Or when did you start doing competitions in general? Because you had a few. So which was the first competition major one that you did? Oh, the big, big one. I mean, I've been doing since I was maybe 11, 12. Okay. Quite lots of competitions in Spain. So let's say the, the my first big one was the Nielsen competition. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which was 2020? 2019. 2019. Yes. That okay. was my last year in Bachelor studies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, I remember watching that one. I was watching the videos of it recently because... There were some really good flute players that year. Yes. Uh, who won it that year? It was Josephine Oleg. That's right. Yes. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, and Josephine is She's great. incredible. She's great. Okay, uh, but you you got third that year, yeah? Mm -hmm. Nielsen, and you got the prize for the newly commissioned piece. Mm -hmm. What was the experience like of doing Nielsen? Well, that was great. It was a roller coaster because, yeah. I mean, uh, usually I think there is... A longer period of notice when you are invited and then yeah. when you have to play but this one was like two months it was january when we got the yeah. notice and then march you had to prepare and you had to have the piece composed which we had to uh write on the second round we had all of us had to write a collage yeah on different excerpts from nielsen yeah. and um free it was a free composition on that so year. no limit to like the length either or how long did it have to it be? was 10 to 15 minutes okay. if i remember okay. well yeah and um, was it only like could you choose the layout of the instruments? Could it be flute and piano, solo flute? It was every uh, solo flute. Had to be solo flute. Yes, okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. And there was a strictly a percentage of what you had to have from Nielsen and from okay. other music. I think it was 50 Nielsen and and then okay. 30 uh, maybe not from uh, not contemporary pieces. Yes. Yeah. Non-contemporary pieces like classical stuff and then 20 contemporary, if I'm right. Okay. Yeah. If I remember right. And was this for the first round? That was for the second round. Okay. And the commission piece came on the first round. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was quite a lot of new repertoire. For that me. is a lot of music yeah. going on at once, yeah. Yes. And the first round and the second round, they're like, are they this one day apart or the same day? No, it was uh, maybe two or three days of first round. Okay. And then it started the second round. Okay. So you. So the first round was just the commission piece, or it was the commission piece. It was the arrangement of the organ trio sonatas from Bach. Oh yes. It's so beautiful. But that was a good idea to put that in as well because there was an album of that recently. I don't know if you know Jean Ferrandis, the uh -huh. French flute player. He did an album of those organ trio sonatas uh -huh. arranged for flute. Yeah. They sound so good on flute. Yeah. They are beautiful. Yes. I think that's a really good thing to do as well because you know it's Bach. It's always great. But mm. that was awesome. Okay, so that and the newly commissioned piece. The newly commissioned piece and French piece. So it was Dutilleux, either Dutilleux, Gobert Ballad, or Saint Can Sonatine. You yeah. could choose them. Choose from... Which one did you do? I did the Dutilleux Sonatine. Okay. Yeah. Why? Oh. Because that was the 
piece I was playing most from the three. Okay. Of them. Okay. And yeah, the other ones I didn't play actually yet at that point. Okay. But I, from doing competitions, I really wanted to have familiar pieces. If yeah, the of rest course. Is yeah. New. Yeah. So I was like, okay, Balad Gobert is nice and Gasonatin, I would love to play. It, yeah. But I was like, be practical. Yeah, be, <laughs> yeah, play the safe one. Okay. So you get through the first round. Second round then is your collage. The collage and big sonata. But yeah, uh, it was like big pieces. It was a weird list because they were big pieces like Prokofiev, Sonata, Undine, yeah. Reineke, yeah. Vidor Suite, things like this. Yeah. And then it was uh, uh, Sinfonische Canzone from Karl Elert. Oh, which yeah. Is a shorter piece. Yeah. And uh, I thought maybe it's the less common that the people will pick. I, go, I went for that, which is like 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and then it's a collage. Okay. Yeah. So what else was in your collage? Do you remember? What else? What else was in your second round? What exactly did you play? Yeah, it was the these two pieces. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then third round. Third round, it was Benda flute concerto in minor. I picked that one, but we could Benda. pick either uh, François uh, Franz Benda. Uh, it was uh, D minor, Carl Philippe. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, three concertos in a row from Vivaldi, which are short. Wow. Okay. Yes. Cool. And Bender. is that with orchestra? That was with string orchestra. Awesome. The Odense okay. Symphony Orchestra. And had without you... conductor. That was cool. Oh, really? Yeah. Had you ever played as a soloist with an orchestra at that point? Yes, I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, with youth orchestras. I had quite a few experience with the conservatory orchestra in Ibiza. I played a okay. few times. With band, orchestra, like different. Okay, so it wasn't uh, yeah. you to you then to do that? No, 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 no. And it how did fun. it feel doing the third round? How was it? Were you nervous? Were you okay for it? It was super fun. It was, of course, you know, wrecking. And I mean, for that competition, of course, if it's a first competition, my first competition was like, okay, I prepared good the yeah. first two rounds and then let's see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So I prepared less and less and less. Yeah. So at that point, I started to feel like, okay, it's happening. Like, uh, yeah. Eh? yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I know that one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I did that yes. once in that audition. Actually, it was terrible. My first ever orchestral audition was in Cannes, in the south of France. Ooh, okay. It was like, there's a small orchestra, a good orchestra down there to be fair, but I had never done an orchestral audition before. And I think they had three rounds. Mm -hmm. And the third round was the Italian Symphony, Mendelssohn. So the first two rounds were you know, your normal stuff, all your orchestral excerpts, your Mozart exposition, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. The third round was the Mendelssohn. And I remember being on the train, going down, going, if I get to the third round, I'm fucked. Because mm -hmm. I had practiced so much for the first two rounds that my third round was really unprepared. And I thought, if I get that far, I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and that was the lesson I learned at the time. I was like, okay, you need to practice the third round as well. Everything, yeah. Practice yeah. Everything. And yeah. yeah, so how did you finish third at the Nissan competition? Yeah. yeah. Which is a pretty big achievement. Like, that's pretty oh, cool for yes. first major competition. Yes, yes, finishing yes. third. Do you get anything from that? Like, do you get concert opportunities or anything finishing third? I did, like, lots of, I, I did get lots of exposure. Yeah. At that point, and I remember my phone burning. Yeah. At that point, like calls from important people, flute teachers, yeah, uh, concert promoters, yeah, even, and uh, yeah, it was really overwhelming. And yeah. the interviews, like I remember, the, f the next two or three weeks, we're just sitting with people, and how do you feel? How do you feel? And I, I had to go go over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> the same process, like oh, it was this, it was nice, and. But it was, yeah, and uh, it, it was really exhausting that period. And from the semifinals, I didn't have so much sleep. I remember that. Really? Like okay. One, two hours sleep. One or two hours? And you still can get up and play? Yes. Like the night of the of the final round, I think I slept one hour. I woke up at three in the morning. I slept late already Man. because it was like overwhelming to know that you're yeah. in the final round. Yeah. It is, yeah. And then the messages of people and so, and then blah, it, it was crazy. The one hour sleep, that's really... Although, yeah, I was talking with Elaine about this as well. She had the same problem when she did Kobe as well. She said, no sleep. And a lot of people I've talked to who have done these big competitions, hmm. I think especially the last round because it's all happening so quick. There's so much going on. A lot of people struggle to sleep before the big competitions. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's really a thing. I think it's finding a balance. But uh, at that point, I didn't know anything. Yeah. I didn't expect anything. But this is so. something you sort of get better at, isn't it? When you do competitions, you realize, you know, even stupid things like making sure you're comfortable in your hotel, making sure you've got you know, your taxis booked from the airport, all those stupid little things, you're eating the right stuff. Yes. You only learn that when you do it. You, you do don't it. know how to do it because you're not at home. You're in a foreign city. You're in a different place. 
and that's maybe one way to get a bit of control hmm. do you feel like when you've done more competitions you've got better at that side of things like preparing and what to do when you're there definitely definitely and there is not a concrete plan but you just go and okay i have to do this i know i, I can eat this i cannot eat this what and do you not eat what uh, do you avoid lactose <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. i go straight to the toilet yeah so. are you lactose intolerant or intolerant, just okay intolerant. then yeah you have to avoid that yeah yes i mean depends on the things sometimes there are nice things on the table or on <laughs> yeah, the, yeah fuck it yeah the reception like okay, dice. a piece of cake oh, yeah yes. yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah i get that anything else uh, do you have like these do you have certain foods that you don't eat when you're performing in general no not really no okay i no or do you have anything you specifically eat when you're going to perform I mean, uh, rice for sure or pasta. There should okay. be there. I mean, I think it gives quite a lot of energy. And yeah. But yeah. Okay. No, no like no rules or superstitions or anything. No, or... no. Okay. Banana. If there is sometimes in the artist room there is yeah. banana, so it's like okay, let me take one. Banana is a good one. I feel yes. like a lot of people get bananas, and I always eat bananas before I perform. I don't know. I think mm-hmm. I was told once that they're because they're so high in potassium and iron, it's like good for nerves. Yes. Don't know if that's true. <laughs> But I don't want to find out if it's true because it's worked so far. The other one I do is dark chocolate. I have like a little bit of really dark chocolate. Uh-huh. And I was always wondering where I learned this from. I think it might be Harry Potter. <laughs> because there's that bit in Harry Potter when Harry gets shocked by the Dementor. And Lupin gives him chocolate. And he's like, it'll help. And I tried it once when I was going to perform. And I was like, it does help. It does, it does. And I was like, yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's the same as Harry Potter. So it works. So I think it's why I have it. But I have like 90% dark chocolate. Like the really dark stuff. Oh, and nice. just like one little bit. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just think it works. Uh-huh. But it might be, it might be you know, placebo effect. I think at this point, mm-hmm. I'm afraid not to do it now. Mm. Because it's worked so far. So I like to yeah, keep it there. Just keep it. <laughs> oh, after Nielsen is the next big one, Kobe? Yes. Yes, that okay. was the year after. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about Kobe then. Because I've interviewed three Kobe winners now, which is really fun. Because I had, oh no, two. Two Kobe winners. Sorry, yourself and Ellen. Alberto won Nielsen. Didn't mm-hmm. Kobe? Yes. Um, Kobe, so... You apply for it. The first round is a video round, isn't it? Especially it the year you did, round. yeah. Yes. Because you were 2020, what, 23? It was 2022. 2022. Yeah. So this is still Corona time. This yes. COVID time, yeah. Yes. It, it lasted for like two years. Yeah. I, I recorded the video 2020, December. Seriously. And it was supposed to happen on 2021, September. That's right. Yeah, because it's every four years, isn't it? Like yes. the World Cup, yeah. Yes. But it got postponed yeah. because it could not take place. That's uh, right, yeah. That year. They decided to postpone it on March. Okay. But then again, uh, like two or three months before, we got the email. You have to send the videos. It went full online, completely online. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is so annoying. Yes, that was really annoying at that point. And uh, especially me, I was living in Sweden at that point. I yeah. was playing at the academy in the Royal Stockholm Philharmonic Orchestra. That's right, yeah, I forgot about that. Yes. And uh, I had to combine somehow the playing in the orchestra plus uh, going to Munich where the pianist was. Yeah. And playing a bit for Andrea as well. Yeah. And then recording. Yeah. So uh, two months we were like, okay, it's very insane. focused. Yeah. And what did you have to record then? It was from the second round because the first round was online already. Yeah. And yeah. then this from the second round, I had to record it was a Carl Philipp Sonata. Yeah. Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach. And it was the G major one. And then it was Dutilio Sonatin for the second round. Yeah. These two pieces. And then the third round were three pieces. I went for Forêt Fantasy. Yeah. And then it was uh, Kag Elat Sonata. Yeah. And Contemporary Piece. I chose, what's the name? Delgado, Panic Flirt. It's a Portuguese composer. Ah. Very short piece. Super cool piece. Really cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. So all that was online? All that was online. The last round was also online. Yeah. So you never got to go to Kobe? I got to go to Kobe for receiving the Oh, really? The okay. Yes. So just to receive the tries? Yes. And then we had a, we had three concerts. Oh, nice. In Kobe okay. and in Tokyo. Okay. And then we got to hang out with the prize winners. That was very okay. nice. Okay. Who else won? What were the other prizes that year? Who else uh, was in Kobe was? Year? It was Mario Bruno. Oh, yeah. The first prize. Then it was Mariana Zolnach. Yes. Oh, that was great year. Uh, Kie Ishii. Uh, that's that's Japanese. Okay. Uh, yes. She's uh, uh, based in Japan. And she's actually moving soon to Köln. 
Really? Yes. Ah, like, another guest so, in the yes. podcast. Okay, yes. <laughs> I okay. met her recently. Man, everyone's um, coming to Cairn. I love yes, this. Yes, yes, yes. Then we had uh, Anna Komarova, this Russian flute player. Okay. She's based in Russia. And Joy Di Blanco. Oh, yeah. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, she's actually going to the flute convention. She is going to the flute convention, yeah. So, yeah. I haven't gotten in touch with her yet, but I've got a list of people I want to interview at the flute convention. You have to definitely interview Yeah, her. and she's like well up on my list because I've followed her for years i want to talk about your composition stuff because this is something that absolutely fascinates <laughs> me and just as i was so i read the script and i got your questions a couple of weeks ago but you're just back from finland mm -hmm. last night did you get back yes last night good <laughs> okay and you have another new piece that you premiered over there yes so let's talk about that piece first so tell us about your new piece what's it called what's the story with so it so it's called filipiniana yeah. miniatures on folk, filipino uh -huh. folk songs okay so i chose uh three folk songs uh -huh and uh, not really popular some of them are very uh yeah popular and uh, some of them were uh, like oh, shit i cannot explain this what the fuck, how can i explain this so let's start again <laughs> all right, all right. so you've got your new <laughs> no it's right <laughs> uh, yeah so uh in these three miniatures yeah uh yeah they are very short one two minutes okay. each it's okay. flute and cello and uh, it basically so portrays good. different regions from the philippines ah, like they cool. are three bigger regions it's Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao yeah and I took some characteristic spots one is more the busiest part of Manila mm -hmm. uh, which is in Luzon and then yeah. you find Visayas which is more traditional and Mindanao it's more tribal actually okay so okay. yeah one of the miniatures sounds really like uh, going into trance and okay. it, it's um, a rhythmical a melodic ostinato yeah going behind which I'm doing it with the flute as effects yeah and then the cello is playing the melody in a very high and soft register. And when you say you're doing the flute with effects, do you mean like extended techniques? Or? Extended techniques, yeah. Yeah, what kind of extended techniques? I have like key slaps, I yeah. have like ch ch the sound. Oh, I nice. have also yeah. there this one, which yeah. is, uh, sounds like a tabla instrument. Yeah. From yeah. In the, in, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that's one miniature. Then another miniature, I, can, I sing because it's like the calling yeah. of uh, the, the tribal calling, let's say. And then the cello, for example, is doing a seagull effect. A which, seagull effect? Yes. How do you do that in the cello? It's, it's written with a glissando and in harmonics. So it's basically going like this, two or two strings. Yeah. I don't know, maybe cello followers. I'm so yeah, sorry. Yeah, they can correct us maybe, yeah. <laughs> but this cello, uh, this effect, I got it from George Crumb's uh, Vox Balene. Oh, yeah, this yeah. So one of the numbers is the cello doing the, the cigar yeah. sound. So I, I have to steal this. <laughs> that is so cool. So first of all, is that going to be, is there any recordings going to come out of that, do you think? I think so. I Even mean, the live one from Finland? Yes, yeah? from the live one. I okay. hope they can give me the recording. Okay. And I plan to post it, of course. Yes. Uh, and then would you ever think of doing an actual recording, like a studio recording of it? I don't think. No? I don't think. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. I'm fine with it. Okay. As, as it I'm really was. looking forward to seeing it come out then. Also, the singing as well. Yeah, because your other comp uh, composition, Music is Life, you yeah. sing in that one as well. Yeah. That, I think that's so brave. Like, <laughs> I would rather, like, I don't mind. I, I love doing contemporary music. I love contemporary music. And I love doing all the extended techniques. But singing, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. The fear it gives me of having to sing on stage, I couldn't do it. Mm. But were you singing before? Yes, since I was like probably two or three. Okay, yeah. so you're very comfortable singing on stage, no problems yes. at all. No problem. No okay. Problem. Uh, yeah, and at home we used to do karaoke. Oh yeah. It's really. It's, and I be singing in the karaoke. Yes. Okay. Yes, What's yes, your yes. karaoke song? My karaoke song, mm. probably some Stevie Wonder, like uh, oh. Overjoyed. Oh man, that's yes. good. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's brave though. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to do that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you have to be able to sing to do Stevie Wonder karaoke. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what my karaoke song I've done karaoke a few times I'm not a good singer <laughs> my karaoke is more you know drunken karaoke uh -huh. Spice Girls I normally go Spice for Girls? yeah, yeah I'm a big Spice Girls fan so yeah. usually Spice Girls or I love the song Poison by Alice Cooper Oh, that's one of my ones I do in karaoke really? yeah but uh -huh. not Stevie Wonder I'm not brave enough to do Stevie Wonder <laughs> not at all uh, yeah see it seems like you love all these different art forms so when you're composing is that important to you that you combine your different art forms and your different heritages and all that yes it's super important it's, yeah since I was for example when I really discovered I have to do something with it it's when I did the, um, before college the pre-college was uh, from 16 to 18 I did uh, performing arts 
Ah. How do you say? Bachillerato, we have. Yeah, it, okay. Right? Like a, yeah, like a, stu- as a subject, you mean studied it? Uh, no, it's as a main thing. Ah, so okay. we have the main okay. subjects, like language and history gotcha. and so. Gotcha. And instead of doing economics or yes. Latin or yeah. whatever, or, yeah, we, you I did had the performing theater. arts then? Yeah. Okay. So what is that? Dancing, singing, theater? Uh, yes. Everything? Yes. Everything. Like, ah. yeah. Theater. And so we had two, yeah. two hours a day of Oh, wow. Theater. Okay. And then, uh, from that, uh, I got more comfortable even on stage. And before I was already quite comfortable, but I got more aware of okay of my body presence and ah. how to, I want to to present myself. And then uh, started okay, let's do something with it, like uh, not yeah. only just flute playing and to combine it already. Again. Yeah, already when I was more like kind of communicated with my. Um, with my gestures or with my eyes, yeah. this kind of expressing as a whole thing, and uh, that. yeah, it's it's it was a part since I was young. Let's say. Okay, do you think that's something that would be important, or something you would recommend to younger flute players is to study theater a little bit to give that like, self awareness on stage more than anything? I would say yes. I've never thought about that before until right now, but that makes so much sense. Obviously, mm-hmm. are you aware of that? Like when you go on stage to just like just play the flute but when you go on to do a flute concert are you consciously aware of like what your body's doing or is it natural it's a mixture you don't think on the moment yeah but you build up on your practice sessions of course yeah like, so you yeah. practice really okay what kind of things would you be practicing then as an example like the bow for example. yeah i hear i have said for years you should practice your bowing <laughs> yes. because people who don't practice their bowing you can tell they haven't practiced it because it's, yes. it, it is like quite hard yes, it it's is. a skill in itself yeah it is it is and what I, do you what, do you have a trick for bowing uh, counter anything from the sense i got like uh, bowing and saying super califragilistico spialidoso there we are yes is that in spanish uh, yes that is in spanish <laughs> well i can't even do it in english and you're doing it in spanish what the fuck yes so yeah, you said as you go down, you yes. say super colorful, the guys behind you and back up, and then go up. Yeah, That's otherwise it's too short. Yeah, some people count, I think, and then also the head. Uh, it should be, you know, like you cannot do like this. Yeah, or you cannot, yeah, because that looks yeah, you know, like just everything parallel and and then look down and yeah, there the are. timing and sometimes you add of course the gesture of thankfulness and. You know? That's one. That's yeah. when you have to practice. Yeah, <laughs> I practice I, for fun with my friends about this. Yeah, thing. seriously. Yes, yes, yes. So like, like a mock performance where you just go out and show them how you. No, like we're just speaking and okay. How do you bow? You know, yeah. like <laughs> I think it's super important. Like I've said, man. Like a performance begins. It doesn't begin when you start playing. Yes. It, like for me, it always begins with the walk on the, the stage. The walk, the walk. Of because course. that's one that you're always tempted to go a little bit too fast or too slow. Too slow. And you do have to look up to the audience. You have to smile. Yes. I think there's nothing worse than seeing a performer coming on who is already like that, and you're like, oh no, no, I'm no. already lo- not like, invested. Um, you you, you want that confidence when you walk on stage. Do you practice that? Do you practice? Of course. Yeah. Of course. Do you have any tricks or any tips you can give us? A <laughs> trick. So it's one of the tricks I got in my academy in Stockholm. It was imagine first thing which animal you are like you think you are Ooh. associated your spirit animal. Yeah. Or, What's yeah. yours? Mine is lion somehow. Yeah. 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 Like that's uh, a good one. Uh, having this hair. Yeah. Mind, yeah. Um, thing. And then you have to imagine it. But when you go on stage, you have to um, imagine it walking next to you. What the animal the coming animal, with you? Okay, yeah. so it comes with you, and and that gives you the the confidence, you know, the energy, ah. the boost. So you, if you have the the lion next to you, so oh, the lion is big, so yeah, um, it has this hair, so it's like okay, I have the lion, so you just go over the stage. And, that is yeah. so good. Yeah. I love that idea. Yes, that's oh, that's a one lion of the on things. stage. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, and then even when you're when it comes to your gestures on stage, is there anything you think about with that? Like when you're actually performing? It depends on the period. Like yeah. s- some of the years I was actively moving a lot around. Yeah. Not on purpose, I would say. But at that point, I was like, I, I, if I feel it, I have to feel it on the movement as well. Yeah, yeah. So it came out very exaggerated. Okay, okay. And some people were telling me that at least, but some people told me, you just play as it's, you are. Yeah, exactly. You know? But... Lately, I would say yes. If if yeah, if I have like um, a goal and and the music is quite okay in already yeah. and and I've yeah. digested, I know already what to do. Yeah, yeah. 
then I think it's the the setting with the body, which yeah. helps to enhance like everything and bring it to the next level. Yeah. Like okay, where am I and well, how do I take this breath? Yeah. Or um, yeah. I totally agree. Like I think performing is a visual art as well. You're it's part yeah. of the show. It um, is. And it has to yeah, it has to be coherent. I suppose is the the most important thing. I love performers who move as long as it's coherent with the music, That's as long true. as it all fits together. Yes. And I think it's something that I was terrible for. I used to basically fucking dance on stage. It was awful. Mm -hmm. Because I thought it was fine. It feels like you're being expressive. And then I watch a video back and go, uh, that's a bit much, Gareth. Mm -hmm. So I had to practice really stabilizing myself and making it more as a coherent movement. But it did take me a long time to really learn how to do that. Yeah. Like it's too. a skill. You have to practice it. You have to train it. You have to really learn. Yes. Like also your eyes. I always wonder what the fuck to do with my eyes when I'm performing. It took me a long time because I used to have a horrible, I think flute players all do this, mm. but I had a horrible habit of if I played a high note, especially if it was piano or pianissimo, I'd look up look as up. if I'm like asking for divine intervention to keep it in tune. And it got to the point where it's like, no, because when I looked up, my eyes would, it would go like, like, like white uh, nearly yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it looks like I'm dying on stage and everyone's like, no. <laughs> but like these are important things you have to study, I think. Yes. I think so too. And that's where yeah. theatre maybe helps as well, theatre training. Helps completely, yeah. And, and like how to feel the stage also. Yeah. You know? Not being standing in just your area, but standing and expanding your presence, you know? Ah, yes. So, okay, being like this, but being also like open yeah. like to everything, to the to your chamber music mates, yeah. to the audience. Yeah, also you, if you're on a big yeah. stage, yeah, you have to be aware of the space of it. Are you consciously thinking when you're on stage, like I need to fill that area a little bit more do you move about when you're on stage yes i do i mean i i try to check this is a bit sick but no i, I try love to this. check my space like uh to the piano first yeah but also the resting space that's like from you to the end of yeah. the stage yeah. so sometimes it's so big that that gap that i want to go closer uh -huh. to the edge but not so far still to the piano yeah okay and also sometimes I don't want to be clo uh, so close to the piano, like yeah. the pianist itself. I mean, it's good to have a contact, but not super close. Yeah. So it's like from outside, it feels like, okay, it's, they are super close and there's yeah. a lot of space. These are my thoughts on, on I think thing. that's, yeah, I think it's super yeah. important. The spatial awareness of what we're doing is really important. Yes. You can see with some players, they're very good at like, for me, the king of that as well, but the king of most things with the flute is Emmanuel Bau, yeah. with the, the way he takes up the space on stage. Like he's also, I used to watch videos of Bau as a kid, and he looks like he's a really big guy. And when I met him, I'm like, you're not actually as big as you look on stage, but he fills the stage so massively, and he moves about, and he's so aware of the space, and it adds to this effect. It makes you enjoy the music more. It's, it's a complete coherent piece of art, as opposed yes. to just music, and there's no visual aspect. I think it's super important. I love that. I'm so yeah. I could talk about this all day, but we can't talk about it. We have other <laughs> things to talk about. The other thing I want to talk about is we talked a bit before the podcast. Baroque flute. Yeah, this is becoming a real passion of yours as well. Yes. How long yes. have you been playing baroque flute? For five years already. Okay. Was it five, six years? I and what brought you to it? Why? Uh, it started as a, an optional subject. Okay. Actually, we got the opportunity, and I think two or three from our, the class. Okay. Mm, have it for one year. And then I asked for one year more, like, could I still continue? And then my teacher, Marion Troibel Frank, yeah. which is super cool. Uh -huh. She's like, come to the entrance exam and uh, you can have chamber music. And, yeah. Because we were just having like flute lessons. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, come for the exam. You play chamber music, you play with uh, cembalo. And boof, that was one of the best decisions, really. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Super nice. And, uh, also, the other subjects we had, one of my favorites was, um, how do you say, basso continuo, like... Uh, figured bass? The, the figured yeah. bass, but playing it actually on the cembalo. Oh, you and played it? Reading, reading one, one line and then building up the chords. Oh, I love these things. You can do that? Yes. Man, that is obscene. I used to watch people do that and think, how do you do that? It's a, like with the numbers, yeah. So you yes. just get the bass line and you have to sort of work out how to harmonize on top of it. Mm-hmm. Nah, I don't know how people do that. That's that's <laughs> yeah, it's that's crazy. magic. That's witchcraft. <laughs> that's what that is now. So you play harpsichord as well, then piano. I mean, yeah, piano actually quite more. Harpsichord, not really. But I got the this one year of okay. two year training on on this, and then yeah. how to spread out the chords and uh, yeah, just harmonically what's happening. Which is so important. Mm -hmm. I think flute players maybe don't study that enough as well. Is 
what's going on harmonically and reading because you're always told like read the piano parts but i think a lot of people don't know what to do with them while actually studying the chords realizing the harmonies getting to know it it makes your life so much easier as a flute player as well okay, when you know what's going on harmonically i think baroque music is obviously the yeah. best for that because it's so harmonically complex um yeah so you pick up baroque flute do you just play baroque flute or have you played classical or are you playing like the six hole baroque flute or do you have one with a key on it or the eight key the, the yeah. uh, classical flute i started this year actually. okay okay and uh, baroque flute okay yeah, just for now i mean renaissance flutes would be amazing also to start really with. yes but uh, step by step yeah because the renaissance <laughs> flute is really, really hard do. isn't it yes have you played one at all no, no okay i've never even seen one i don't think i've ever mm. even seen one but no i don't want to play it no <laughs> like we were saying earlier i think the baroque flute is so hard I think it's so difficult. It's too much work. <laughs> but how do you find switching between Baroque flute and modern flute? Depends. Depends on what I'm doing or what I have to do. But generally, it helps me to to find more like resonance and more space. Yeah. Because you cannot just blow fast. So it's it has to be very. Uh, yeah. Control. No, not control, but it put it like uh, in the right place, like uh, placing yeah. it in the in the yeah. in the right spot. You know, for the yeah. sound especially in the mouth or sometimes you have to have uh, other kinds of images like here like I feel the sound here for this note okay and it's, yeah sometimes it's lower I mean with the modern flute it happens but in the in traversal flute it's even stronger I would it say. it's much more delicate yeah yes because yeah the dynamics it's really not big no the range no but you can speak more with articulation for example true yeah yes that's fascinating with and the colors colors that's what i was about to say because there's certain notes that do have slightly different colorings yes like individual notes have more color on the baroque food i feel mm -hmm. also due to its limitations i feel a wee bit as well you have to really work to make each color speak and to really look after it's it's fascinating it's mm -hmm. fascinating i would never do it but it's a fascinating subject do you change your like embouchure or anything to switch between the two for me no i know people okay. that change yeah but I do not really. Okay. So actually, it helps me. Yeah. For the yeah for the modern for flute. modern flute plan? Yes, there is something in the precision ah. here. It's a smaller hole that it helps me on the modern flute. That's fascinating. Yeah. And then when you play baroque music on your modern flute, do you are you more aware of like the stylistic? I do, and I tend also uh, to to play like as if he was playing the baroque yeah, flute, okay. which it doesn't help so much because you need another speed of air. And I True. have to remind myself constantly, like, oh no, you're playing modern flute. It yeah. needs more air. Yeah. It gives more um, like speed of air. And sometimes I am I play like if I, yeah, the mood is like playing the baroque flute on the yeah. modern flute. Would you use the same ornamentation and stuff if you were doing a back on modern everything, flute? Everything, everything yeah. stays. Okay. It's just uh, the, the air, I yeah. think, is changing. I yeah. love that. And yeah. you're a brave man. Are you going to continue to play Baroque for you? Are you going to take it further, you think? Like yes. Be part of your career, yes. yeah? Yes. Have I you ever do. done a concert with both in the same concert? Both in the same concert? Not yet. Or, no, I'm lying. In Ibiza, I played a solo flute, uh, for flute solo concert. Yeah. And there I played, I was switching. <sighs> and how was yes. that? Was it okay? Super cool. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just, yeah, with the speaking and then playing, if you have to moderate and then change instrument and then moderate, it, it's sometimes a bit tricky. Oh, but... It was fine. I, oh, man, you're doing everything. Um, orchestral playing as well. Let's talk about that quickly before we get to the fun questions because I want to get so much to ask you. Um, so you were in the academy in Stockholm? Yeah. Uh, how long were you there? It was one year. Okay. Hmm. And how was that, first of all? It was amazing. Yeah. It was... I got to play many nice programs. I got to play on the first flute. Oh, seriously? Yes. Actually, several projects were on the first flute, but the very first one... It was very unexpected because the two first flutes yeah. got sick on the beginning of the week, <sighs> the two of them. So we were playing uh, Shosta 9, Shosta yeah. Gorich 9 Symphony, and uh, it was Sakari Oramo uh, conducting. Yeah. And then he said, okay, uh, where is the substitute? They called the substitute, yeah. but it could only come after the break. So it was like, please, can you play the first part? Yeah. And I was like okay let's do and good that i'm good at sight reading yeah otherwise it would have been really a pain so you hadn't prepared the part yet either i mean the piece yes but not the part yeah I mean, there were some few solos like really solos where the strings were there and you just have the melody and i was sometimes <laughs> miscounting even okay. but they were very they were very friendly and they were very supportive about it 
And then they decided that okay, the substitute. Okay, if she comes, then okay. she can play the second flute part, and I got to play the first and flute part. What was in the second half of the program then? It was the second half was Shostakovich nine, but the first half was a piano concerto from Mozart, which was super cool because yeah. it had many solos at the woodwinds, and then it was Hilborg. Uh, what was it? Uh, what composition? Uh, modern music. Okay, it was very cool. And, and the piano concerto, who was playing the piano? It was Angela Hewitt. Oh, not familiar. Which is based in, I'm, if I'm mistaken, in Italy. I'm okay. Sure now. Okay. She has, yeah. And when you were in the academy, first of all, did you get the chance to play any of the big solos as a first flute? I mean, it was this one, what I played. Then I played, I know, not big, big solos, let's say, but Haydn symphonies, for example. Yeah. They are super nice. I got to play, it was with Don Koopman. That was super cool. And the Baroque specialist. Yeah. It was super nice. Oh, Tom Koopman, yeah, of course, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very nice week, one of my last weeks. And what else? Yeah, then it was uh, most of the school concerts and the uh, Christmas concerts also, which was recorded, all of these things. Yeah, fun. it was it was so much fun to be there. And then you've done plenty of orchestral playing since. Have you got to play any of the big solos yet? Have you got to do like La Pre Midi, uh, Daphnis, no, no, anything like that? Yet. I got to do Brahms first, for example. Oh, okay, nice. I did the Ender at Philharmonie or yeah. the in Hamburg. I got to do Vojak eight. Oh yeah. I got to do no, I think if I have to think of the biggest one that was in the Elf Philharmonie, in the Elf Philharmonie, the Brahms first. Yeah, Elf Philharmonie, yeah, yeah it's incredible venue yeah. for anyone. I haven't been into it yet, actually. I've seen it from the outside, but I haven't been into it, but it looks, I mean, is it good to play in? And, mm -hmm. Yeah, the acoustics is as good as everyone says. It's amazing. Because yeah. everyone says the sound is incredible. Like, arguably the best in the world, a lot of people think the Elf Philharmonie. Yes, and you kind of hear everything. It's Yeah. And uh, even if you, yeah. Just you hear everything. Like if a mosquito would fly, you would hear. Yeah, the, okay. The yeah. And that was Brahms one you did there. Yes, it was Wilde Frank as a soloist that week. It was Shostakovich first violin concerto. Okay. Yeah, and then it was Bichkov conducting Semyon Bichkov. Okay. It was a super nice week, and yeah, fun story. It was uh, the week before. It, it was a program change. I, I was supposed to play with Miko Frank, uh, Cesar Frank symphony. <sighs> Yes, also beautiful music, beautiful. I love Miko Frank so much. He's yes. one of my favorite conductors. Yes, yeah. super cool. But he canceled like three, four days before. Man. And then they said, okay, the program change would be uh, this uh, with Semyon Bichkov and Brahms first symphony. Okay. And then I said, okay. There's a solo. This, yeah, yeah. The solo, but the whole symphony itself. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the Brahms one solo, that's the dee, da, da, da. Exactly. Yeah, okay. After the horn and. Yeah. yeah. But like I've never played that one, but I always every time I hear it, it seems like you really need to blow that solo. Like you have to play it loud as shit to make that solo speak. Yes. How was that playing it? Whoa, very. Yeah, I just rem I have the image of having that that big hole, and the, the solo horn also was very playing very loud and resonant, and I felt I was giving like my whole soul yeah. <laughs> somehow. Yeah, because yeah. That, yeah, so the way it works in the symphony for anyone doesn't know is the horn has the solo first. Yes. And then it goes directly to the flute. It's directly the flute. And it's it's not like it's not technically a difficult solo, but it is you need all of your energy to play it. And it's only a couple of bars long, isn't yes. it? Like five bars or something. Yes, yes. It's for the stamina. I mean it's, coming uh, from the whole symphony. And then just comes the solo, and then you just have to have this bright and yeah. luxurious sound, and yeah, it's just. Were you nervous doing the solo? Yes, I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Do you have any tricks for dealing with nerves when it comes to these kind of big solos when you're in the orchestra, or do you just? I just say, okay, hold on and go let's for it. Let's go. It's happening. Let's go. Está pasando. Yeah. Like in Spanish, I say, está pasando. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Like. I think that's, yeah, you have to just get up for it, don't you? Yes. But that yes. would be a scary one as well because, you know, some solos, they happen so quickly yeah. that you don't really get a time to think about them. But uh -huh. that's one of those solos you do have time to think about it because the horn's playing it first. Yes. So you can sit there and think, right, here we go. It's coming yeah, up. Yeah, here yeah, we go. Yeah, here yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. And then you just have to go, right, just close your eyes, hold on, hope yeah. for the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it went well? Yes, it went super Okay, good. nice. It's a nice week. We've been talking for an hour. We're going to do some fun <laughs> questions. I sent you them over. I don't know if you got a chance to think about them, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's rapid fire, but you don't have to go too fast, okay? okay. Don't panic. People get very nervous about this. Let's do fast. To. Let's do fast. So okay. I don't yeah. have so much time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Favorite flute concerto? Uh, Nielsen flute concerto. Really? I would say so. The more okay. I play it, the more 
Uh, yeah. Thank you for giving an answer. A lot of yes. people don't give an answer to that. Too afraid to give an answer. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Do you remember the first flute album that you bought? No. <laughs> do you remember any albums you would have bought when you were younger? I have never the flute? bought a flute. Seriously. Album. No. Oh my I'm goodness. I'm so sorry. Oh my I just bought uh, <laughs> to learn it uh, to learn the Carl Philipp Emanuel, uh, yeah. the G major concerto, which is also one of my favorite concertos. I have bought the Richard Brown online. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it was not available, so I said, okay, let's buy it. Yeah. But okay, do you remember streaming a flute album when you were younger? Like, listen to one on Spotify? Maybe the French flute recital from Paris. Oh, yeah. Ah, classic. Okay. That was, yeah, but I don't have any physical. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's good, man. Yeah. Do you have, do you remember the first album you got in general? Ooh. So no, nothing to do with classical music. It can be still classical, but anything. We had a store like close to our place, and uh, it it must have been one of these compilations of summer pop music compilation. Okay, was Caribe that... mix. It was okay. Uh, every year they had a compilation. Compilation. Was it Spanish music or Spanish music? Yeah, and yeah, mainly Spanish. Okay, what kind of music were you listening to when you were younger? When you were a teenager? When I was a teenager. That period, concrete period, it was more electronic music, like house, EDM. Really? You're an EDM guy? Wow. Yes. And uh, with my friends, we actually went to watch the sunset. And uh, in front of the sunset, it was very for like touristic people. There was a DJ and uh, uh -huh. the, there was a resident DJ, but they were also bringing like EDM stars like um, Afrojack yeah. or Steve Aoki. Oh, so man. I watched all of these like bringing Steve Aoki and Afrojack. Yeah, because yeah, they were obviously all playing Ibiza at the time. Yeah, so yes, yes, all the yes. big stars would have came there. David Guetta, for example. Oh, yeah. David Guetta, man. man. He didn't get to go to the sunset, but I watched him uh, play in some of his uh, yeah. visits. Yeah. Yeah, so this is all like, like 2014, 15, yes, that kind of time. Yeah, exactly. 2013, yeah. 14. That this was... time I'm very familiar with that kind of music, yeah. Yes. I would have been listening to the same you? thing, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I listen to a lot of David Guetta, but I don't think I'd listen to him anymore. But uh, yeah. at that time, Steve Aoki, oh my God, yeah. Yes. Man, too much. That you're bringing back a lot of memories. Yes, um, yeah. It's like a project, X project. Yes, uh, yeah, like, but yeah, the entire soundtrack to that film. Yeah, that's yes. exactly it, yeah. Yeah, Charlie X, yeah, all at the same time, yeah. Um... Okay, if you could switch instruments, but be as good as you are on the flute, what would you switch to? Viola. Really? Are you taking? Are you joking? No, 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 I'm not joking. <laughs> really, viola. I would. Why viola? viola? Because it's it's not. I mean, or viola or cello, but viola. I would say viola. I think the viola is underrated. To be honest, I think it's, it's a super instrument. underrated. It sounds great. And it's... there is some great concertos for it as well. There's that yeah. Walton concerto and stuff. They're really nice. But the range, the range yeah. is. It's not like mm, going super high, or yeah. or it's not. Also, it it has everything somehow, and and the color. I'm, yeah. I'm into mezzo range. Yeah. Also with with voice with voices yeah, yeah, yeah. with female voices. Okay, when you listen to a high voice, you get impressed. But when it's this female color going lower yeah. and lower, like this, uh, I don't know, um, Ella Fitzgerald or yeah, good comparison. Um, yeah, when they have this lower and this velvet in the sound, yeah. the viola has it. I totally agree with that, yeah. I love the viola as well, but not many people do. That's why I thought yeah. you were joking when you said that. But, no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, if you could have a career outside of music, what would you do? Any career? Probably on tourism. Tourism? Course, yeah, so maybe a manager of a hotel, let's say. I could see you being a hotel manager. Or, or a waiter. A waiter? A waiter. Okay. Waiter. Have waiter. you ever had a waiter job, no? Yes, I did. Okay. For two seasons, two summer seasons. In Ibiza? In Ibiza, oh, yes. Tough job as well. Yes, yes, in yes. like a bar or in like a nightclub? It was in a bar, yes. And then I, I was also kind of a the tray boy going to the swimming pool with mm, snacks. That was and, you? And you drinks. did that? Yes. Nice. I was okay. That. Was, was so it always nice for like try. British people or for... It was mainly British. There yeah. was also Belgian and... Uh, no, it was mainly British people. Yeah, nearly always yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Oh yeah, that's a really interesting answer. Okay, yeah. if you could have a drink with any musician, alive or dead, who would it be? Alive or dead, okay. And language isn't a problem. You can speak the same language. We assume they speak the same language. What about that? So you don't have to worry about language. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I think it's Beethoven or something, you can... Yeah. We assume they all speak the same language. It would probably be... Michael Jackson? Oh yeah, are you yes. a Michael Jackson fan? Yes, I do. On this, yes, especially on this these acts that he has, the solo acts. Yeah. And when yeah. he starts, like, I mean, I sometimes watch these '80s or '90s live performances he had. Yeah. And uh, the lights starts to like, and I mean, his introductions. Yeah. Lasted for I like know. 15, 20 minutes. I know. 
and it's just people screaming and then lights and then dancing and then this and then that. Yeah. It was it was a one man show. It's a proper show, yeah. Yes. That's a good one, Michael Jackson, man. Hmm. Do you know why I actually I met the the creative director on the Is This It term from the nineties? Huh. She lives in Cologne. Yeah. Whoa. I can't okay. say much more about that because legally I don't think well not legally, but she doesn't <laughs> want people to know she's here. But she lives around this area. I've met uh-huh. her a few times and she's a friend of mine now. And every time she talks about it, I'm like, Oh my god, you were the director on Is This It? Michael Jackson, the biggest tour of all time. I think the second wow. biggest tour now, I think the biggest tour is now Taylor Swift. Well, that's, yeah, yeah that's Eras has kind of kicked it away, but uh-huh. yeah, she lives here as well. So get her on the podcast. Now I can't get her on the podcast. Ooh, so I talk about it. No, not no. Taylor Swift, the girl who, the director. Yeah, no, like, Taylor Swift is not living in Cologne. <laughs> Taylor Swift's coming to Gelsenkirchen. Have you seen this? Who? Uh, yeah. You know Gelsenkirchen? Have you been to Gelsenkirchen yet? No. Oh, it's the biggest shithole in Germany. Okay. And that's where Taylor Swift is playing because the stadium has the roof. It has a closing Whoa. roof, so that's okay, what she's okay. doing. She's not doing Köln or Dusseldorf. She's doing Gelsenkirchen. So you know Whoa. she's coming soon. Are you a Taylor Swift fan? <laughs> no, no, actually no. You're missing out. I mean, I know the 2007 songs. You know, yeah, like all this love story. You know, yeah, oh, the love story is love- classic. Yes. Taylor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the but new ones, I'm a bit lost about. Like, it. You know, like shake it off. Shake it off. Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, that one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, then that's gosh. that's the two big ones. You're fine. Yeah, and she has another one. Oh, she has, she has another, another one. I don't know. She has all of them. I could go on for a long time by Taylor Swift song. I know a okay. lot of Taylor Swift songs. Well, the Red album has nothing but hits. Like, yeah. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Uh, yeah. That okay. one's on Red. What's yeah. the other one on Red? Oh, you put me on the spot here now. Uh, <laughs> I really should know. Like, I'm trying to think of the hits. Yeah. <laughs> I, I promise I do know them. I just can't yeah, remember yeah, yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm going to cut this now. Uh, it will come. Gone. It will, <laughs> god damn it. Oh yeah, All Too Well, that's the big one. That's my favourite one. Which one? All, All Too Well. All Too Well, no, I don't know this one. She had a 10 minute first number on her newest album. Okay. Yeah, because she's re-recording all her old albums at the minute. Uh-huh. Because she lost the rights to them. Mm-hmm. So she's bringing them back out now under her own record label. Okay. And her fans listen to that. Yeah, anyway, we're not getting to Taylor Swift. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last question. What is your favourite drink? You can have alcoholic or non-alcoholic. You can have uh, one of each if you want. One of each, okay. If I'm here in Germany, the mango schorle, I would go. Mango schorle? Not yeah. apple schorle? No, apple schorle, no. Mango no. schorle, no. I'm a quite exotic. That is very exotic, yeah. yeah. Is. I don't they think I've had the mango schorle. have it, yeah. And if it's not mango schorle, maracuya schorle, they would have. Yeah, I've seen maracuya schorle. Yes. But I think they use it more for like cocktails here, don't they? I don't think anyone actually drinks it. Uh, apart from you. Maybe, yes. <laughs> I think yeah, you're maybe. the only person who actually just drinks it on its own. <laughs> I think everyone else puts rum in it. But yeah, okay. And do you have a favorite alcoholic drink? Alcoholic drink? Pff, depends on the mood. Depends, depends yeah, on okay. the mood. I'd go for red wine, for sure. But uh, mojito, if I'm yeah. on the beach, for example. Yeah. And if I'm with like... with friends and the, like the teenager friends teenage yeah. friends i would go for like you know, jagger jagermeister with uh, coke you know or something oh. like this or with pineapple juice that works very jagermeister good. and pineapple juice <laughs> yes <laughs> oh i don't know man that doesn't sound great i'm not gonna yeah. try that yeah, do you no. drink uh, what's that one they drink in spain cani mocho no i don't drink it it's not red wine and yes cola? i love that yeah i think no, that's no. great no, no, i'm such okay. a fan of that sangria Oh yeah, of yes. course, sangria. Can you make sangria? Do you yeah. make a good sangria? I mm, I need a recipe. I'm not the. Oh. Yeah, no, no. But. It's not very. Oh, it's not very high of you. You need to make your own <laughs> recipe. Even I have a recipe for sangria in my head. Do you? And I'm okay. Irish. <laughs> what about beer? Do you drink beer? Have you gotten the kudge? Uh, yes, yes, but not really. No, yeah. no, no. no. I I tried, of course, kudge, but I got first to drink beer when I got to Munich quite late. Let's say. Yeah, because Munich beer is years, good as well. I remember some of my friends going into beer. I was like, not for me. Okay. And then Helles in Munich. That was. Uh, Are you a fan? You like yes, it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Because Munich has the big, like the big proper beer as well, like, the big mm-hmm. beer one as well. Yes. Because we don't yes. get that here. Yeah. That broke my heart when I moved to Cologne because I'd never lived in Germany or been to Germany until I came to Köln. Yeah. And I went and I was like, "Can I have a beer, please?" And I was like, "Köln is the beer," and I was like, "Great, I'm going to get this big giant thing. It's going to be so delicious." And then Köln is the opposite. Köln comes in these stupid like, little 200 milliliter glasses, yeah. and I was like, "What's that? What yeah. the fuck is that, man? Where's my what big beer?" Like, no, yes. that's Bavaria. That's not Köln. But I went to Bavaria for the first time. I went to Munich a few years ago to play sport, and yeah, they give me like the big giant thing, and it was so good. <laughs> oh, it's great. That's it's yeah. The good thing is that uh, the curse keeps uh, like it's small, so it's it stays fresh. fresh. It's fresh. That's true. Yeah. Great. Okay, then before we go, uh, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you, what to check out? You're on social media. Is there anything else you'd like to promote? No, not really. No, no. Okay. Just uh, no. 
Well, yes. I'm going to promote as well. Uh, music is life. Your solo ah. piece. If there's one thing to listen to, that's the one to go to. From my opinion, it's on your YouTube. It's on your YouTube channel. Actually, yeah. Yes. You've uploaded it. Yeah. So yes. that's the one. That's from the Nissan, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Go check out Music Is Life. Thank you. That's my thank recommendation. You. Thank, you. Um, thank you very much for coming along, man. This thank was you great for fun. Yeah, thank you're you very well. welcome, man. Uh, yeah, thank you, everybody. I'm in America at the minute, so <laughs> yeah. God, on knows. Fun. I'll be. Fun. I'm just about alive, probably at this point. I think I'll be at the NFA convention at this point. Oh. I don't know. Ah, well, we'll find out. Anyway, thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next week. Yeah. Ciao.